I parked my bike at Queens and we're going in to go to see our endocrinologist. Hopefully we're not running too late. Brought my meds just in case. So here we go. Here's the entrance to the Queen Emma Clinic. Here we go. And we're going to take a long corridor walk to the facility or the clinic. I'll show you how long this walk is. We go all the way down this Okay, and then after going down this hallway, we go down another long hallway, and we're almost near the clinic. Okay. Try to have aesthetically pleasing pictures. <laughs> All right. I don't know how aesthetic they are. Let's see. And we are down here, lower level, so we don't get anybody's face. And now we're at the clinic. And there's the sign. Let's read the philosophy of care. We believe that all people will be cared for with dignity and respect in an environment which is sensitive to each person's own belief, values, and culture. Each team member, patient, and family is committed to a collaborative approach in providing an environment that will promote healing of mind, body, and spirit. Our philosophy is extended in a place of harmony as guided by the vision and ideals of our founders. The purpose to create a healing environment throughout the organization which promotes and fosters partnerships with patients, their families, and the health care team. Guiding principles, all care given is patient and family centered. Care is culturally sensitive. Collaborations between all health team members, including the patient and family. Care is delivered with an emphasis on education. Hmm. Yet and still I have many questions to ask. Like, why is the cancer center has to be referred to from Queen Emma and not working collaboratively together when they say they do? All right, so we'll ask that question. Now, some people treat you fair and respect your culture, and some people just treat me like angry black woman, which is not being sensitive to the symptoms of my cancer. So, like the deep voice and the emotional behavior that comes with this heavy onset rare tumor. So, do they treat me like I'm the third person in Queens to only have pheocyotoma? We'll see. So, I'm finding out that my 9.30 appointment is really 10.30 and I uh, checked on my appointment for tomorrow. It's still set for 2.30. Here's my number and they won't call it until it's near time. It's almost time for them to give me a call on that. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. Well, I've noticed while I've been hanging around the hospital, if I look into an office while they open it, while I walk by, or uh, walk in an area of the hospital that's a little more deserted, people will actually come up to me and go, uh, do you need any help from um, where are you going? Not like as if to be helpful, but they say it in more of a what are you doing, why are you being noisy type of thing. So I tell them the truth. I'm meddling. I'm trying to see what's in that office. If that's administrative or just paperwork, I don't know. Maybe y'all uh, department I can ask a question to. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm always trying to learn and find out. All right. So that's that. Okay, I'm in the doctor's office waiting for the doctor. I've been here since 9.30. It's going on almost 11 o'clock. And um, uh, for a clinic, that's considered pretty good. So we'll see. We don't have the one doctor I thought I was going to have. I'll have another one, so I'll have to learn how to spell his name and Google him later. But we'll mainly be asking when can we expect uh, when the surgery will be done so we can contact the relatives and um, other questions in regards to referrals to the Queens Cancer Center and other things of that nature and try to find out um, what the procedure really entails. 
So we'll see if he's willing to be recorded. He probably won't be, which to me is a sign of shadiness, but we'll see. Okay, they sent in an intern, um, well, a resident physician, to talk to me first. And with this type of thing and me being the third one, I, I get a little fearful. So I, they're sending the other guy in um, to deal with me. And I bet you, if anything, she'll be with him because this is a teaching school. And like most clinics, they teach on the poor and the weak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, we are leaving the Queen Emma Clinic. Uh, talk to my doctor, and I'll tell you what's going on. Okay, so they can't tell me when exactly uh, I should take the surgery and when all my levels will be okay. They got to do more tests, tests for diabetes, thyroid problems, glandular problems. Uh, they even want to check for oil ulcers. Uh, ooh, got to get up. And um, once they check for all that, then we'll know more about what's going on and when I can take the surgery. So I talk to the cardiologist tomorrow and we'll find out then. All right. Okay, I'm leaving Queens Medical Center and heading back home and checking out try to get my cell phone back from Tanya. I left it there last night. I'm just cutting through on my bike. This is my shortcut. It's in the back of the city hall. I asked questions about stress or if stress influences my medication and I was told no so we'll find out what's going on with that all right and we'll keep him well this is St. Thomas Square near where I live I love the fountain it's nice and peaceful come and think sometimes and I guess I'm just gonna head home home Hey, so um, I'm washing some of Matt's clothes by hand because um, I don't have a mini washer or dryer. It broke and my landlord died. And make a long story short, it never got replaced. And the one I was using, I'm being told after using it a year and a half, I'm not allowed, which is crazy. Nobody didn't tell me that for a year and a half, right? So. Now I'm washing clothes by hand, which is no problem with me. I'm old school. Now, I've been thinking about why they really can't tell me when my uh, surgery date is, but they increased the amount of my medication from one to two pills. And you know I got to turn in my blood pressure reading to Kelly, which I did today, and... So I got to wondering, what is going on? Why they can't tell me? And, and boom, of course, it always leads to that. Insurance. So I gave Aloha Care a call and to see if uh, a request or if there's been approval of a denial for uh, the procedure for the operation. So, I, um, I've already scrubbed the pants. I'm just rinsing them now. Um, I called Aloha Insurance, talked to a girl named Amber, and Amber told me that um, there hasn't been no request. And she only mentioned her request on August the 24th, even though I saw the doctor on the 22nd. It took them two days, because one said the 23rd and one said the 20th. No, one said the 24th and one tw said the 25th. Um, but anyway, 
however it is, it never happened the same day or the next day, um, what, like both of them should, um, give or take a day. But anyway, those were the only requests sent in and approved. And no surgery. So there's got to be some serious questions to be answered. So I called and I spoke with a girl named Michelle, who's a MA, left blood pressure readings for Kelly the MA, talked to Tony the secretary, who knew nothing, and left messages for Dr. Anoba and um, the resident endocrinologist to call me back, who is Kobayashi or Katatachi or something. I'm sorry if I didn't take time to remember. Um, please forgive me, but um, I know the, the endocrinologist that she was with only comes in once a month. And the other one that they had me booked for comes in on the 18th, but the 18th he's booked. So I need a little more understanding on how this works. Is every because is everything going to be put off due to uh, they don't want to, they're not trying to, they're waiting for what? So and the endocrinologist was like, Doctor, I know what should be the one to answer these questions, but it a call for her to call me and answer the questions. The request for that had not been put in. And they're talking about I got some kind of appointment in March. And if this is supposed to be an important uh, thing that I'm carrying on me, if pheochromocytoma is supposed to mean anything or is supposed to be taken seriously, why isn't it to these people? Because I told, I told the doctor, I know you're not a specialist in this and uh, what I have, but I'm willing to deal with what, what I got, you know. And he asked me if I had diabetes or gallstones or all these things I never had problems with or never knew of. All I had was a couple of benign lumps in my breast. That's all I know. I, and he was kind of freaked out about the irregularity of my heartbeat and my heart murmur. And I told him, well, yeah, it freaks out emergency rooms every time I go in there. And I just, whoa, you know what I'm saying? So... I really need some answers so I can feel better because even with them doubling my medication and them supposed to calm me down, none of this makes me feel calm and none of this makes me feel better until I can get answers. So we'll see how long it takes for anybody to return my calls. <sighs> wow. Thank goodness I had talked to Amber at Aloha Care and found out or I wouldn't have more to worry about. <laughs> Okay, well, gotta finish rinsing off these work uh, pants so I can make sure Matt can uh, get to work nice and clean. Because a wife's duty is never done, especially when it comes to taking care of her man, no matter how dysfunctional or how many issues he has. I'm still going to take care of him and make sure he is looking good. Alright, talk to you soon. Oh, I ate leftovers today. Um, I thought I'd let you know. Okay, bye. I was raised by a single mom who struggled to pay the bills and my grandparents... And she'll talking about her daddy is just help. wearing me... What is my that on that woman's head? Started out my, uh, as a secretary and she'll... It just touched me with the story of her father. Race. Reminds me of my so grandfather. She hit the glass ceiling. And for years, Lord men no more qualified than she was. Men she had actually trained were promoted up the ladder ahead of her, earning more and more money while Barack's family continued to scrape by. Wow. But day after day, she kept on waking up at dawn to catch the bus, arriving at work before anyone else giving her best without complaint or You know, Barack went to a and private school and she worked her. hard to put him so through that private school there, being a bank really manager and then a bank president. Like so many American families, you know, our families so. weren't asked
I guess she worked hard to do well. A lot of Americans do. I know uh, my, my stepdaddy did. He worked hard to do well. As a general contractor, laborer, and then contract uh, owner, contractor. Yeah. I was raised uh, black suburbia in the 80s. And, and I was afforded opportunities that I, I appreciate. And I appreciate them more now when I don't have them. Now, ain't that deep? All right, Michelle's speech was very, very moving. Very moving. I really did enjoy it. And I see Obama's. Uh, Sisters there and uh, uh, Michelle's brother. Is not an easy very thing. nice, very nice speech. Job really enjoyed it. First lady I United felt tough. Uh, I really feel she's sincere in what she's saying and, oh and believes in what, in what she, uh, uh, her tonight. husband is doing it's for the country. And I just hope uh, when she talked about cancer uh, and helping a woman with cancer, she meant somebody like me too. Okay, I told the doctor I know I got to be in intensive care right after surgery, so how long will I be in, in the hospital? And she's, he's like, I need at least 48 to 72 hours to recover. So what I should have asked was how many days before will I have to be in there to level off my blood pressure before I take the surgery? He's like, well, once your blood pressure is level, we want you in surgery right away. So, why would they want to wait? Is my question. I don't know. I'm, I, okay, this time I swear I don't want to talk about it anymore. What you call them, Mom? Dumb doctors? <laughs> I know. I'm not going to tell them that because I do have to deal with them. I'm, I, I, think, I think I annoy them enough by asking too many questions. They treat it like I'm invading them when it's really... Me trying to be well informed. I look into your eyes and I see love. I look into your heart.